Let's do one more example of these 2D rigid body problems before we move into 3D equilibrium. Now here what we've got, we've got a metal arm and it supports these two loads right here. We have F1 and F2. We've also got this cable CB. Now that cable can only handle a maximum load of 1500 newtons before it fails. What we want to do is we want to find the maximum loads for F1 and F2 if F1 is double the load of F2. We're also going to find the magnitude of the max reaction at pin A. So this right here is a pin support. What's our first thing we want to do? That's right, free body diagram. So let's draw the metal arm. All the forces are acting on that. And let's put F1 and F2 first. Those are the easiest ones. So we've got that. You can put the distances on here if you want. Sometimes these distances kind of complicate the drawing though, but we'll put them on there anyways. Now we've got F1 and F2. What else do we need? What about the cable? Which way should that force be? Remember, a cable always pulls. It doesn't ever push. So it wouldn't make sense for the cable to be going this direction, right? We wouldn't want it pointing into the metal arm. It should be pulling up. So we got CB. Let's call it that. And then lastly, we've got this pin. Now remember what the pin does. It holds this in place, but it still can rotate about the axis going through the pin. So it prevents translation in the x and y directions, but allows rotation. So here we'll have AX and AY. And again, I just assume those directions. Right? Don't spend a lot of time trying to figure it out. Just assume your directions go forward from there. All right, so now we've got this. Let's go ahead and what we're looking for, want F1 and F2. Let's look at our equilibrium equations. I'm going to say to the right's positive. We've got AX. It's in the positive direction. And then we've got this CB over here. Now, we need to find our angle because we've got the X component here, and then you've got that Y component right there. We need this angle. We can find that using this triangle. If you use that triangle, you'll get an angle of 36.87. So just use the arc tangent of 3 over 4. And that's all that is. And that'll give you that. All right, so now that we have this, we can find our x component for CB. And what do you think we should plug in here? You think we should just leave it as CB? No, because we know the maximum load it can support, right? It's 1500. So instead of having this be an unknown, let's go ahead and put 1500 in there. So let's have minus 1500 cosine 36.87. And we can use that max value because we want to find the maximum loads. Okay, that's all we have for X. Set that equal to zero. Notice AX is your only unknown, so you can solve for AX. We get 1,200, and that's Newtons. All right, so we got that one done. Now let's look at the Y component. Up is positive. Now we've got AY. We've got these two forces, so minus F1, minus F2. And then we've got our Y component here. Now remember, CB is 1500, so we're going to plug that in. That is a positive 1500 sine 36.87 equals 0. Okay, and let's call this equation 1. Now if you look here, it looks like we have three unknowns. Now can you all think of a way to simplify that where we wouldn't have three unknowns? 
we have a relationship between F1 and, two, uh, and F2, right? If you look up here, F1 is equal to 2F. So let's go ahead and instead of F1, we'll have F2 times F2. Right? So keep that in mind. Now that limits us to two unknowns here. Right? So hold on to that equation. Come back to it in a minute. Now let's look at a moment. Counterclockwise will be positive. And I need to figure out a force. Or not a force. I need to figure out a point where I want to find my moments about. What do y'all think would be a good point? Remember, you want the point that has the most unknowns going through it. Right, so here, there's not really one choice that's better than another. You would want to either pick this point or probably this point. Uh, I guess you could also pick this one, but I would say one of these. I'm going to go ahead and pick B. So this one up here. And when I do that, I get rid of that unknown there. Okay. So now... Let's find our moments about point B. Alright, so AX. AX has a moment about B. And the distance that we need is going to be... Change colors here. We need that distance right there. Right, so now if you think about that, how would we find that? We know that this is 30 degrees. This length here is 2.5. So that means our moment arm distance is going to be 2.5 sine 30. Because that will give us this length right here. Okay, is that positive or negative? That's going to be a positive rotation about this point. Because if this thing was free to rotate and I'm holding on to this, that force would push it that way, which is counterclockwise. Now let's look at AY. That has a moment also because it's a distance away from point B. Now the distance I need for that is this. What's that distance? That distance is going to be the 2.5 cosine 30. All right, now we have that distance. Is that positive or negative? What do y'all think? It's going to be negative. Because again, if you hold on to this, and then imagine how it would rotate with this force acting on it, that would rotate that metal bar that way, which is clockwise. Now finally, the last force we need is this F1. That distance is going to be 1 cosine 30. Is it positive or negative? Should be positive because that's counterclockwise. And then let's set that equal to zero. Okay. Now we already know AX because we found that before. So that was 1200. Now we've got AY and F1. Now up here I have AY and F2 because I'm going to get rid of this F1. I'm going to replace it with 2F2. Let's go ahead and make that same substitution here. So substitute 2F2 in for F1. If you do that, what you get is 1500 minus 2.165AY plus 1.732F2 equals 0. Let's call that equation 2. Now if you look, both of these two equations have the same unknowns. AY and then F2. So you can solve those two simultaneously. And then if you do that, when you solve, you get AY is 1272.06 newtons. And then F2 is going to be 724 newtons. Was one of the things we wanted. Once we know F2, we can get F1. F1 is twice 
the value of F2. So that gives us 1,448 newtons for F1. And we want the magnitude of the reaction at A. So our magnitude of the reaction at A, we need to find AX and AY. We have both of those. Here's AX. Here's AY. So A then, you'll just find the magnitude. So 1,200 squared plus 1,272.06. Square that. Do the square root, you'll get that A is 1,748.7 newtons. Okay. So that's what you get there. So hopefully that was a useful example. Kind of shows you how to go through the process and work through everything. All right, one more thing I want to point out about a fixed support. We haven't had a fixed support in the examples. We'll get to those when we do the 3D ones. But just in case you see one on 2D, if I were to tell you that this was a fixed support right here instead of a pin, you would draw a couple moment on here. And then that couple moment would be added in to your moment equation. All right, so it would just be another unknown you'd have to solve for. So I just wanted to point that out in case you see it, but we will see examples of that when we do the examples in the next section. See you then.